Hello, welcome back. Wild Strawberry Garage. We're in a different garage. Huh, different cars. What are they? We're at uh, TTI, working on the TTI racing cars. Um, I'll be on another 69 Corvette today that I will introduce you to shortly. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna get this thing ready to race. Now I did a lot of work in the off season. I'll go over all the, st the stuff that I did uh, over the winter and everything that's left to do before we go racing, uh, hopefully the beginning of next month. We wanna go out May 2nd. We'll see what happens if it doesn't get canceled. And uh, yeah, I'll walk you through everything that has to happen. But first, let me introduce you to the car. Okay, isn't she pretty? It's a 1969 uh, B Production Road Racing Corvette. Um, we've had it for, gosh, a little over three years now. Um, we race with SVRA, SCCA, uh, and it's a runner. It's a stout car. It's got a snotty engine in it. It's a dry sump 350 uh, with a little bit of some tricks and tunes and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I've personally, I've been able to drive this car only a couple times and I've never felt anything like it. Something this heavy to get that light and toss you in the back of that seat. I mean, it's, uh, that's something to feel. I highly recommend. So. All right. I got her pushed outside. 1969 B production Chevy Corvette. It's got a nice dry sump 350 in it. Jones pulleys, Gilmer belt on the dry sump, on the uh, oil pump there. What else? Valve covers uh, have oilers in them. You can see right there, we're plumbed in with vacuum up there. Three stages of vacuum. And uh, yeah, she's snotty. She likes to move. Unfortunately, that's a true statement. Inside, nice old school racer. Okay, we're doing two-piece rotors. Found oh, got them. You know, uh, right there. Two-piece rotors. And uh, we need to register ring, which is what centers it on the hub. And yeah, that's where we left off last time. So that's going to be first up. So in the off-season, this thing got a lot of suspension work. Me and Tom figured out how to lower it down. What would you say? Inch and a half? Probably something like that. Inch yeah. and a half in the front. We were gonna do uh, a semi coil over like, like Van Steele has. And so we bought all those parts separate. Instead of getting their kit, we got them from AFCO. Uh, we got shorter springs, higher spring rate, and we had an adjustable perch. And we ended up just for the hell of it, just trying the springs in without the perches. And uh, I kind of like it. Tom kind of likes it. And our headers are a little low to the ground. We might get some sparks, but we'll feel like a real F1 car. That was our major, that was one of our major upgrades this, this off season. We really want to get the, the center of gravity on this thing lower and get it sitting flatter through the turn. So that was a big one for us. You can see some of the suspension stuff we did. Those are those new springs. And then there's also, we got Stalker Star, single adjustable QA1 shocks. And right now we're focusing on putting our two-piece rotors on and getting rid of these uh, these ones here. Right. This is a register ring. It goes on the hub uh, and takes up space in our two-piece rotor to make sure it all stays snug on the hub um, because the original pole is a little bit smaller. So this has to take up the space. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I'm selling. Oh, of course, they gotta make it difficult. Is that too fat? No, I think it'll be all right. Do they got like four, do they have like four ways in? No, that's the problem. Oh, it's only one way? Yeah, but whatever, we might do. What was the torque? Um, according to Willwood, there's two different. The style that we have, I believe is 198 
um, inch pounds, which converts to 16 and a half foot pounds. So, it's about right. Put a little Loctite on there, wire them. Yeah, what the hell? Hey, I got hot valve left. We did that, right? Yep. Secure the battery box. Still got to do that. Clean cockpit. Did it. Fill the water. Did it. Change the wheels. Did it. Wire the hour meter. Did not do that. Replace T-tops. Got to do that. Alignment. Got to do it. Hood. Got to do it. Rear end. Got to do it. Nut and bolt. Got to do it. So that was on our old list. Our new list is two-piece rotors, brake ducts. Yep. Blah. Um. Let's see, I wired the transponder. Shit, we might have a lot less to do than I thought. That's good. I don't know why it seemed like we had like a mountain of stuff to do. Well, right before all this crap happened, we did. We got pretty yeah, hard. We got pretty close. Here's our list. We got to do that before we go racing. She misses me. Right? She doesn't even like you. Oh, she doesn't. Molly, you're breaking my heart. Oh, yeah. Give me a chance. Yeah. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yes. Don't. <laughs> you don't want to go. Hey, get over there. Go with Grandpa. She don't want no part of the rain. No, I guess not. She wants to stay here and work. <laughs> yeah. Directional, wired, good to go. Let's see if it actually fits. Oh, it's going to fit. Whoever measured him is a genius. Oh, yes. Oh, it's in there. It's in there. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, it is. Ooh. It, just, it was on the rotor when you slid it in. You did it. Oh, yeah. It's tighter than a... Yeah, never mind. Okay. Rotors are on. Uh, we just got to try the wheels on with our spacers. Make sure that all works. And then we're going to be on to brake ducts. So there's our cooling ducts that uh, are plumbed in from the front, from the splitter down in the bottom to the actual caliper and the rotor, uh, just to force some air over there. And then we're going to do T-tops, and then we're going to do hood. And then we're going to be done. Get after it. I wonder if we should just make a skid plate now. <laughs> yeah, we probably need it. T-tops on, hood is on, Tom is turned on, nah, it's not a Ford, Oh. putting in the 411s, taking out the 373s, uh, we're running at the New York safety track on the 9th, and it's a short track, so we want those 411s in there to shake everything down. Um, so I'm gonna see how fast I can do this. It's a pain in the butt to do one in uh, in a Corvette, but uh, I've done a couple and see how fast I can get through it.
when you have these off, pays to check the U joints while you're down here. Both these feel pretty good. No catch, no hitch. Okay, drive shaft, and then this thing's about ready to come down. So what I like to do is get these half shafts off first. Then I can turn the drive shaft with this and then stick a pry bar in there to hold it while I loosen them. And of course, eat all the dust and rust that falls down in my face. Tastes good. Good, it's iron. Good for you. I hate working on my back so much. Uh, this has a hinge panel inside that allows you to get to these four bolts without dropping this whole cross member. So that's cool. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave you down here and I'm going to go get those bolts and drop this thing on a jack. All right. Well, that's old one out in under 30 minutes. So... New one's gonna go in slower than that, but we'll get after it. Whew. Okay, old one, new one. Uh, there's a couple differences about these rear ends other than different gear ratios. Um, first, this one has threaded stub axles. So instead of those U-bolts I took out for the half shafts, you get these heavy duty caps with bolts in them. That's the first thing. The second thing is the cover. Um, so because I have that panel in there to take this thing out, it's a little bit difficult to line up just the, the holes. So this, has, this cover has studs put in here, so I can pop these uh, studs right up through the holes and then it'll all be lined up and ready to go. So I'm gonna change to that. And then, uh, yeah, I just gotta make sure I still have the hardware for that somewhere. So, Get after it and get this thing back in there. Be done. So when I do this, I like to leave it down about a quarter and a quarter inch from here, from the bottom of the fill. This cover also has a drain in it, which is kind of neat. So usually I'll do this with the shocks off and it makes the trailing arm kind of just hang there free. So you can push it in and pull it out to get the stub axles to uh, made up to the, or you can get the half shafts to made up to the stub axles. But I left the shocks on this time and um, they're fighting me. So I have a big gap up here that I need to take up and I don't just want to do it with a gun. So I got to figure a way to push on this thing Get it to go up in there. Try it from the outside. Good sound. Oh, I'm sweaty. Christ's sake.
real important when you do these to get these bolts in the right spot. There's two short ones and two long ones. The long ones go back here, the short ones go closer to the front. The reason is that the two short ones actually go into the back of the case and uh, on the other side of them is fluid. So if you put the long ones there, you'll crack the case and uh, ruin it. So there's this little dimple in there that goes into the case and it's not going in. If you just force it, it'll uh, misshape it and then you're, well, just making a lot more work for yourself. Ugh. I think it's because it's all rotated right now. There it is. Bingo. So I had about a half inch of thread showing before. That's what I'm going to go for. So that should end up in there uh, once this thing gets some weight on it. This is kind of an abnormal spring because usually you can't just do these links. You know, it won't be up that high. That's because we work to get the back down uh, pretty hard over the off season. But um, yeah, because usually this will have more tension in it to where it will be hanging down here and you'll have to use the jack to uh, bring up one side at a time to get on these. And that's honestly why this was fighting me in the middle. If, uh, if I didn't have to link on these before I got on in the middle, it wouldn't have been very hard to get this spring up there. But it's the same thing as always with this car and just those little things, you know, you get used to. Okay, that's it, rear end's done. Alright, that's it for this one. Um, we got this thing, got the new rear end in it, we got those new uh, two-piece rotors on, uh, the hoods on, T-tops on, so we are going to go take it for an alignment in the next couple days, and then the next time you see it, we'll, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do the video of that alignment, and then, uh, then we're going to the racetrack next weekend, so um, yeah. I'm going to cover all that as well, get some good in-car footage for you guys to watch, and uh, we'll hear this baby run. So that's it for old number 13. Next time I'll probably be back at the uh, Wild Strawberry Garage working on Sluggy, but this was a nice change of pace. Um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe as always. If you want to contribute, you want to donate, paypal.me backslash Wild Strawberry Garage. We'll see you next time.